like to get into this article here. This is an interesting commentary in Market Watch, and it says, "Invest in the lottery, gamble in the market." It says most people don't see playing the lottery as investing any more than they view playing the market as gambling. But there are enough similarities that it's worth examining the behavior of the player, particularly at times when decision making is crucial. So, of course, people will have different opinions as to how much the market relates to a casino. But as I pointed out earlier, the uh, high frequency trading is making them look a little bit more similar. Now, the whole idea before was when you're investing, you're buying future growth of a company that produces value, so on and so forth. But now it's really tough because people start short selling your stock and hitting it with a lot of pressure. It's going to take a hit no matter how great the company is, okay? especially in this uh, news dominated environment. I pointed out on the last webcast how the news media really doesn't help the situation. They kind of push fear and, and, and it all plays into their ratings and so forth. But this idea is quite interesting in how these two different aspects have sort of gotten a little bit closer together. And this really plays out every day because when you talk to investors, they only consider the upside when they're looking at investments, which is kind of the mentality of the person playing lottery, if you think about it. You know, they say, oh, well, you know, I'm getting 10% returns, I want 25. And, of course, 25% returns sound great. But when I ask, well, are you ready to take two and a half times the risk? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I can't take that much risk. Okay, well, in that situation, you probably have no place, unfortunately, to seek out those high returns because the market pays you for only one thing. They don't pay you because you're a great guy, great girl. They don't pay you because you're so smart. They pay you to take risk. That's it. That's the only thing you get paid for in the market, no matter what they say. The only thing you get paid for is to take risk. Now, with CDs and with your savings account, you're not taking a lot of risk. You're not getting paid a lot. But as soon as the return increases, you can bet that is the result of very smart people saying that's what we need to charge because that's the risk that people are taking. So this is just a, a good reminder as we bring in the new year that chasing returns almost always results in disappointment because if you want 30%, unfortunately, the reality is you have to be willing to lose 30%, if not more. Now, if you have 30% upside, 30% downside, potentially, you're doing pretty good. Now, a lot of investors get themselves in situations where they're looking for a 10% upside. They invest in, a, let's say, a non-traded REIT that's not transparent, that's illiquid, that's shaky in terms of its financial stability. And not only are they experiencing possible 20 30% downside, they're experiencing closer to 50 or 70%, if not 100 Okay, That's where a lot of investors get burned. So I, th I wanted to make this quick point that uh, lottery players are sort of looked down upon because they only think of the jackpot. A lot of investors are investing the same way, and I'm willing to bet that a good number of investors are gambling when they think they're actually making investments, so two very different things. So this article says, ultimately, it's your goals and expectations that should help you set a risk tolerance and decide how much, how much and how you gamble, whether it's the lottery, the casino, or the market. And that makes a good point. It says, basically, when you start investing, you have to first assess what you can lose, what you can risk, and then you start thinking about what kind of upside can I get for that risk? Not the other way around, because when you think of the what downside you're willing to tolerate, it's going to be lower, and it's going to ground your expectations a little bit more firmly. Of course, everybody could think of all the upside in the world. You know, 1,000% return sounds great, but how's 100% loss sound? Not so good, not so good. So it might hold you back and give you more realistic expectation. 